Hundred dollars on the Camry LE Extra Value Package of Options, and be even happier with factory to dealer incentives. So be happy. You've got a Camry. Good evening, George Mallet here. Next on Night Watch, six American prisoners of war are released from Iraq. Burroughs Welcome issues a nationwide recall after a deadly dose of cyanide claims two lives. Anti-war activists gather to remember a man they say may have been killed because of his strong beliefs. Lisa Patton has your weather. Dwayne Ballin Sports. Stick around. Night Watch is next. Drug rejected in America as worthless. Now this man is experimenting with it on desperate AIDS babies in Romania. Primetime investigates Thursday. America's watching ABC. With Hardy's Family Value Menu, Mom and Dad can feed themselves and their four kids for under $10. Dad can feed himself and his son's basketball team for under $10. Mom can feed herself for three kids, a neighbor's kid, and a kid she doesn't even know for under $10. Hardy's Family Value Menu is designed for families who want a lot of delicious food for not a lot of money. Like hamburgers for 59 cents, cheeseburgers for 69 cents, and hot dogs for 79 cents. Hardy's Family Value Menu, the return of good old family values. Hey, you can eat that last Compact in America can now be leased for only $1.99 a month. The 1991 Grand Am LE, driving excitement made easy. With an automatic transmission, air conditioning, stereo cassette, and no down payments. But this is a limited offer. And at only $1.99 a month, these Grand Ams will be moving fast. watching WTBD Channel 11. From across the heart of Carolina, this is WTBD 11 News with George Mallet. The exclusive AccuWeather forecast with Lisa Patton and all the latest sports with Dwayne Ballin. Now, WTBD 11 News Nightwatch. Good evening. If you have any 12-hour Sudafed capsules in the house, get rid of them. That's the word from Burroughs Welcome officials following the deaths of two people in Washington State who apparently ingested cyanide-laced capsules. Though the capsules are manufactured in St. Louis, they are packaged here in North Carolina. First, it was a Tacoma, Washington woman who died after taking this medication, Sudafed 12-hour capsules. Next, it was a Seattle man who died after taking the same stuff. It was only when we had a second case and found out that the code numbers matched that we said, hey, it's not what we originally thought. It is does appear to be a tampering. We need to get the information out. Sudafed is packaged in and shipped from the Burroughs Welcome Plant in Greenville, North Carolina. At a news conference in the Research Triangle Park Sunday afternoon, Burroughs Welcome President Philip Tracy announced a recall of all the suspect capsules. In the interest of public safety, the company has instituted a nationwide recall of this product. I should point out that at this stage, we are operating almost entirely on circumstantial evidence. Jennifer Mealing of Olympia, Washington, was hospitalized after taking cyanide-laced Sudafed. No, it was so fast. It was probably, I probably went into a coma within, I would say, 30 seconds. The poison capsules were enclosed in blister packs, which evolved after the Tylenol poisonings years ago. But officials point out no package is tamper-proof. And they say any capsule could be tampered with before it's packaged. Tonight, Burroughs Welcome officials tell us all Sudafed 12-hour capsules have been recalled. If you have any of that medication, you should return it where you bought it. Now for the latest news from the Persian Gulf. Iraq's U.N. ambassador says tonight that his country has already released 10 prisoners of war. Abdul Amir al-Anbari says six of those prisoners are Americans, including one woman. But so far, there's no word on the identities of the POWs or where they're based. Two POWs, not uh, any of the ones that we know of that are released, are from Seymour Johnson Air Force Base. Meanwhile, General Norman Schwarzkopf said today that U.S. troops will withdraw from southern Iraq 
as soon as a permanent ceasefire has been signed and Iraq has complied with UN resolutions. And in fact, today, Allied and Iraqi military leaders agreed to a tentative ceasefire. About 12 hours after that meeting, Baghdad Radio announced that Iraq accepted the latest, tougher UN conditions. That acceptance could clear the way now for a permanent ceasefire. A lasting peace. That's what dozens of people called for in downtown Durham this afternoon. This rally was organized by a number of community and student groups. Even though the war in the Gulf is essentially over, these peace activists remain opposed to U.S. policy in the Middle East. Many say we have been too quick to call in the armed forces in the wake of diplomatic failures. We want George Bush and the rest of America to realize that the peace movement is still very much alive. We want the American people to know that we do not want to have any further wars. We want to have simply a lasting peace in the Middle East. This rally was dedicated to the memory of Bob Sheldon, the owner of Internationalist Books in Chapel Hill. Sheldon was murdered a week ago Thursday. Many of his friends believe he may have been targeted because of his outspoken criticism of the war in the Gulf. Just a mile or two west of that peace rally in the Bull City, a very different sentiment was being shown today. These people gathered at Greystone Baptist Church to show they support our troops in the Gulf as well as U.S. policy in the region. The colors red, white, and blue were displayed at today's ceremony. Though the primary focus of this gathering was support for the troops themselves, it meant a lot to the families of those soldiers as well. And it's good for me for the support, knowing all these people are here with us, thinking of us and praying for us. We couldn't get along without them. Couldn't get day through day without them. The service included choral selections and an honor guard dressed in battle fatigues. More than 20 people are dead tonight after two separate plane crashes in this country. United Airlines Flight 585 en route from Denver crashed in Colorado Springs this morning. The pilot of the plane managed to narrowly miss houses and apartment buildings near the crash site, saving lives on the ground. In all, 20 passengers and five crew members were killed. And the three-man crew of a Navy plane was killed today when their plane crashed a half mile away from Glenview Naval Air Station near Chicago. As in the crash of the other plane, witnesses say the pilot seemed to deliberately miss homes before he went down with the plane shortly before noon. Dance instructor Arthur Murray is dead tonight. Murray was born on the Lower East Side of New York City to poor Jewish immigrants 95 years ago. His dance style earned him worldwide fame and his own television show. Today, he leaves behind a nationwide chain of 450 Arthur Murray dance studios. Arthur Murray dead at 95. Still ahead on Nightwatch history buffs honor the stars and bars. When it rains it pours. We'll tell you why rainy days worry folks near Buffalo Creek in Durham County. Later on dozens of contestants try for a spot on the Skyhawks cheering squad. Details when we come back. There are still a few places scattered around our planet where you can recharge your spirit in a setting of unspoiled, unforgettable beauty. But none are as close as South Carolina. Smiling faces, beautiful places. Here's Polish news from Mazda. Now's the time to invest in a 626, the sedan with the best basic warranty in its class. Get a 626LX now and get big savings on a package of our most popular options. Plus, get $1,500 cash back from Mazda. Total saving $2,320. It's Mazda's best deal ever, but it won't last forever. Right time, right car, right deal. At your local Mazda dealer, now. Get ready. Joan Collins talks about the pleasures of being single. Why get married? Why give it all up to one man? Those Hollywood love scenes. We were doing a love scene which he insisted on playing without his underpants. And about keeping romance private. Are you in love right now? Ethel? Yes, I am. But I don't want to talk about it. Miss Joan Collins. On the next Oprah. Monday afternoon at 4, only on WTVD Channel 11. You know, few of us really like rainy days, and that goes double for residents of one North Durham community where the rains bring a flood of concerns about the future. WTVD's Keith Whitney explains. When it rains in North Durham County, Buffalo Creek, 
turns into Buffalo River. Runoff from Durham's proposed landfill site number three comes here. Four hours later, it gets to the Little River Reservoir, where Durham gets part of its drinking water. Opponents of the landfill say that where the city gets its water, then where it should put its trash. But everybody out here has their own well. They have private drinking water. If something happened, we have no access to any other kind of water. And then you've got the people in the city. To warn the people in the city, the Northwest Community Association spent its own money to put an ad in the Sunday paper. We wanted to make all the citizens aware that it wasn't just a community-type local problem. We feel like that it's going to affect everyone in Durham if it affects the drinking water. Other groups are running ads against the landfill as well. But this one from the Northeast Neighborhood Association suggests putting the dump in the backyard of another association, the Bethesda Neighborhood Association in South Durham, home of site number 12. The research triangle moved here in good faith, the million dollar companies, which are just a quarter to half a mile from it. And I believe those companies will feel betrayed if they come and put a land uh, field right across it. Little says folks who live nearby would also feel the trade. This abandoned brick clay mine wasn't even a top contender for the dump, but with Durham residents being urged to vote it in, that could change. The economical impact on an area that already has a landfill will certainly not be what it is here. So far, the city is still spinning its wheels on the dump, a political quagmire already dug deep with controversy. In Durham, Keith Whitney, WTVD 11 News. Plans for new headquarters for the Durham Police Department have been put on hold tonight because of leaks from two underground oil tanks. The new department will eventually be housed here in the former People's Security Insurance Building on West Chapel Hill Street. Now that the building is certifiably free of asbestos, architectural renovations can get underway in the next month or two. But the cleanup of oil from two underground tanks promises to be a time-consuming and costly project. The two tanks held 12,000 gallons of oil. So far, there's no word on how much of that oil leaked out or how much soil is going to have to be removed. The state capitol was all decked out in red, white, and blue today, but not the stars and stripes we normally see. Today, the stars and bars were center stage. Sons of Confederate veterans sponsored this Confederate flag observance. Highlights included a gallery display of five different versions of the flag. Supporters say they want to give the Confederate flag the honor it deserves. In recent years, the Confederate flag has been uh, maligned a lot. Uh, it's been thought of as a racial symbol or a symbol of racism, and it just is not. It's been misused by certain hate groups, and we are doing this to explain the proper use and respect that it deserves. Actually, tomorrow is Confederate Flag Day here in North Carolina. Observances were held today to allow as many interested people as possible to attend. A rocky day for some North Carolinians with thunderstorms and tornado watches. Are we out of the woods yet? Lisa Patton's up next with your exclusive AccuWeather forecast. Later on, what are all these people doing in the trees? We'll tell you when we come back. Cheryl Teagues for new light and lively free. I've been a model for over 20 years, which means I always have to a lot of yogurt. Now I've found an even better yogurt, new light and lively free six pack. It's fat free, cholesterol free, and only 50 calories per serving. And on top of all that, it tastes great. For me, it's a model yogurt. Look for my free daily planner from Light and Lively at your local supermarket. Welcome to town, folks. I've got some great houses to show you near schools, churches, oh, bars, Have you got clubs. anything close to a food lion store? Food Lion. We just love shopping at Food Lion. Yeah, but there are other supermarkets all over not the whole. I like Food Lion, not with extra low prices. On the things we buy most. Mm, I guess we're just hooked on Food Lion. Food Lion sells major categories of groceries for less than anybody else. Well, moving along. Now, how many square feet are you looking for? Oh, I'd say 30,000. With big wide aisles. Fast checkouts. Our friendly service. Fresh produce. Any Suzu Rodeo? The Nelsons aren't rich. Oh, no, not rich at all. Yet here they are with a bigger engine than our Toyota 4Runner. They have more power. It's an ugly thought. A longer wheelbase. So? It's first smooth ride. Rear anti-lock brakes. Kids, put the tire back on. And more overall passenger space. Stop having fun. It doesn't add up. The Isuzu Rodeo. True. It doesn't add up. Isuzu. There's no comparison. Lisa Patton joins me now. It has been a rocky day in some quarters of the heart of Carolina. The question is, uh, can we go to sleep tonight without worrying about it? We can breathe a sigh of relief now. It looks like we've dodged a bullet. 
and uh, not without some to do. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of the portions of uh, southern and coastal areas of North Carolina have some trees down, some power lines down, and some homes in some portions have been tossed about a bit, but luckily no injury, and that's what's most important. At the airport right now, we've got 59 degrees with light rain falling. Humidity is at 80 percent. We have winds from the south at 12 miles per hour, and the pressure is at 2915, and it's holding steady. Well, uh, not my idea of a relaxing Sunday afternoon, but the storms broke just long enough for the folks at the tree-climbing jamboree to do their thing, and looks like a, a lot of effort.